Hello boys and girls, so in this video, we are going to move on to topic 8, physical optics. We are going to spend 2 hours on the lectures and 8 hours including the pre and post lab for experiment 6 for the tutorial sessions. So we are going to have 6 subtopics to be covered in topic 8, physical optics. So physical optics is the study of light as a wave phenomenon. Uh, before this, in chapter 7, topic 7, we talk about geometrical optics whereby we treat the light move in a straight line. So, when we move on to topic 8, we are going to study the light as a wave. So, some phenomena such as interference and diffractions can only be explained when we treat light as wave. Okay? So, in this video, I'm going to focus on 8.1. Hydrogen principle. So before we move details into what is mean by hydrogen principle, we have to recall our prior knowledge what is mean by wave fronts. So wave fronts is a line or surface which join all the adjacent points which have the same face in a wave. For example, this one, I have a lot of light wave. So if you notice. Point A, B, and C, they are in phase. D, E, and F, they are in phase. Why? Because A, B, C are crest. D, E, F are also a crest. So, where I can draw a line that connects all the points which is in phase, which are same phase. Okay? So, when I draw a line joining all the adjacent wave points, a, B, C, which has same face, then I'll get what I call wave front. Okay, so wave front always perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. Okay, so wave front is always perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. So the distance between one wavefront to the next wavefront is equivalent to one wavelength. Basically, we have two types of wavefront, plain and circular. What is hydrogen principle? Hydrogen principle is the geometrical constructions governing the propagations of wavefronts. Class. Let us see these simulations. This touch light, this is the source of light, okay? When I press, it emits light wave. This light wave is travel or propagates outwards from this source. So, how we can create all these wavefronts? This is what we are going to discuss in hydrogen principle. So we are going to use the hydrogen principle to explain how we can create all these wavefronts that keep on moving forward. So class, according to the hydrogen principle, each point on a wavefront, it can act as a secondary point source that emitting spherical wavelets. After a time t, the new positions of the wavefront will be the surface that is tangential to all these secondary wavelet. This is how we create the new wavefront after a time t. So, for example, I have a plain wavefront. This is my old wavefront at time t1. So how I'm going to get a new wavefront according to the Huygens principle? So according to Huygens principle, each of these points on is the source of the spherical wavelet. So each of these points on the old wavefront, it will emit spherical wavelet. This point emits spherical wavelet. This point also, same go for this point, same go for this point. All the points will emit spherical wavelet. So, 
The wave front at a later time t2 is the tangent to all the wavelengths. So if I draw a line tangent to all of these wavelengths, then I will get what I call new wave front at time t2. Since go for this wave front, all the points on this wave front will produce the new spherical wavelet. When I draw a line that tangential to all these wavelet, I will produce another wave front at time t3. So this is how we create the new wave front according to the hygiene principle. So the same principle we can apply to the spherical wave fronts. For example, this one. So each point on the spherical wavefront will emit spherical wavelets, new spherical wavelets. And when you draw a tangent line that connect all the points which are in phase, then you have your new wavefront at time t2. So, I can conclude that what is the purpose of Huygens principle? We use to construct the new wavefront for a plane wave and also for a circular wave. So class, when we have an apertures as shown in this figure, when light pass through, what we are going to predict is, according to geometrical optics, because the light ray travel in straight line, we might just get the light the same size as the aperture. So there will be no light reaching these two obstacles, behind these two obstacles. Okay, I repeat. So there will be no light reaching behind these two obstacles. This is what we predict according to geometrical optics. But then, This is not actually what really happened in our real life. What really happened in reality is we find out that the light ray will spread out vertically and they able to reach behind the obstacle. They able to reach behind the obstacle. So how are we going to explain what actually happen here so we able to explain what really happened in real reality by using Huygens principle so Huygens principle can be used to explain the diffractions of wave when they pass through obstacle or apertures so class each of the point in the figure show they will act as secondary source of wavelets. So all the points will emit secondary wavelets. So the tangent to the wavelet from point 2 until point 5 will be a plane wavefront. But then at the edge, point 1 and also point 6, we find out that the spherical wavelets will go around the edge of the slit into the region it would otherwise reach. When we draw the tangent for all the spherical wavelets, we have this one. This is our new wavefront. So it can be seen very clearly the spherical wavelet, the light ray, after pass through the aperture, it would go E around the edge of the slit into this region. Okay, so hygiene principle that suggests that the incoming to the curved shape of the wavelet near the edge, the new wavefront will bend or diffract around the edge, and this is applied to all kind of ways. So according to the Huygen principle will able to explain why the light ray will be diffracted and it will be spread out and it can reach behind the obstacle. It can reach behind the obstacle. So it is successfully explained by using Huygen principle. 
So class, diffraction is most obvious when the size of the gap is approximately the size of its white flank. So larger the gap, it will produce smaller diffraction. So the diffraction is not obvious. But smaller gap, it will produce a very obvious diffraction pattern. Then this is the comparison of the wavelengths before and after diffractions. So the wavelength will unchanged. The wavelength before and after diffraction is always the same. Same score for the frequency is unchanged before and after diffractions. The speed also unchanged for the wave, but the direction of motion will change as the wave spread out after the diffractions. So they will change their directions as they spread out. What about the shape of the wave? So it, the shape of the wave will spread out more when it passing small obstacle and it will spread out less when it passing large obstacle as shown in the figure given now. So for small ob obstacle, we will get the spreading is large, obvious. But for large obstacle, we will find out that the spreading is not that obvious to us. So this is how we use the Huygen principle to explain uh, what happening in diffractions of light.